guys? Today we're going to talk about silhouette and how it can shape fashion. So really along with color, these are one of the first things that really impact the viewer. And designers use silhouette just like they use color to make a dramatic impact on the viewer. So silhouettes can have a dramatic effect on a look. Um, as we can see here by these examples by Rei Kawakuba and she um, is, is very well noted for playing and experimenting with silhouette. But silhouette has been around for a long time. Its big shapes and emotions that it can draw have been around as long as clothing has been around and have been giving wearers a certain look and effect. So let's take a look at um, some of the different silhouettes throughout a time period. Uh, so Silhouettes themselves can uh, define uh, a certain t time period of dress, as we can see here in this little timeline of silhouettes uh, throughout the ages, and we can see how the silhouettes themselves are changing from decade to decade, um, and can give the wearers uh, different looks. So let's take a look at some of the basic shapes and silhouettes that have been around throughout cultures and throughout history. So here we can see um, an ancient Greek toga. This is actually Artemis, the huntress. Um, and it has a sort of basic silhouette focused on the sort of tiered at the bottom, uh, sort of padding out the waist a little bit. And again, so um, with these, I want to, to focus not only on the silhouettes but the basic shapes that are creating them because we can use basic shapes to help balance and create our silhouettes and that is really the root of all of our silhouettes. Here we have a feudal Japanese kimono, very large silhouette, very large imposing shapes. Here we have a sort of ancient Iranian uh, very much noted by the large headpiece and straight lines coming out by the veil coming down from the headdress. Here we have a sort of Victorian era or late 19th century uh, garment from the Herero uh, peoples in Namibia. Very interesting silhouette. They played with um, a sort of traditional Victorian silhouette made it their own, creating their own flares with the silhouette. Very interesting. Here we have a Baroque, a European Baroque dress, where silhouettes went to the extreme with the large bottom of the dress. So you can see these large sort of circular shapes on the hips that are brought down by this sort of long uh, trapezoid shape. We have a traditional Incan with a very interesting sort of silhouette changing with the headpiece and the um, sort of diamond shapes that we get from the um, kind of wrap that she has. Shapes and silhouette, how to build out the body. So those are some historical um, examples. So let's take a look at some modern examples um, in different sort of categories of silhouette shape. So first we're just going to look at big silhouettes, so go big. Here's a look from Victor and Rolf, and again this is sort of definition of big and imposing. So with big uh, overall silhouettes of course we get something incredibly dramatic, um, very imposing. Um, it, you can't see it, it really says, hey look at me, um, it's very sort of aggressive. Another Victor and Rolf, they like big silhouettes. <laughs> but we can see the overall shape here, the shapes underneath. Always important to look at the shapes underneath. Here we have sort of a triangle shape and the sort of round parts coming out here. And again, Batista Valley, again, very um, uh, good at v uh, very big silhouettes, love to play with big silhouettes, lots and lots of flat fabric. It also, um, so here not only are we getting that drama, that volume, um, but we're also getting a lot of luxury. So all the fabric, the many, many fabrics, so big silhouettes have also been synonymous with sort of luxury, um, excess, 
um, abundance, things like this. Two more big silhouettes overall, just one from Balenciaga and one from Alexander McQueen. Um, again, big silhouettes coming out, very dramatic, very imposing. Top heavy. Now this is where we're going to focus a lot of the fullness and a lot of the area of the silhouette building out in the very top. And it's going to get closer to the body in the bottom. Here we have one from Ray Calcuba. We can see, again, bigness up here, and then sticking pretty close to the body all the way down. Here's another Alexander McQueen with the shoulders brought out. Now, with these sort of top-heavy silhouettes, uh, they too can look quite aggressive. They tend to uh, emphasize shoulders um, coming out. It can look very authoritative. Um, and it also brings a lot of the eye right up to the face. So we see the big area and we see it kind of framing and bringing our eye right up to the face. Two more examples of top heavy silhouettes. We have a uh, dress from Bob Mackey on Cher. Um, again, you can see very dramatic, um, very authoritative, bringing the eye up to the face. Here as well, we have a lot of big fuzzies around the shoulders, making a large fullness on top, um, and again, sort of sticking a little bit closer to the body all the way down, and this one's from Gucci. Now we did top heavy, let's do bottom heavy. Uh, bottom heavy, let's go over, uh, I have here a lot of these sort of traditional gown silhouettes. Um, and again, this is very, very popular for our sort of evening gowns. Uh, we have these sort of lines flowing out, filling out toward the bottom, coming up, and basically creates these lines that draw the eye up and focuses on the sort of upper half of the body. It's very elegant, it's very dramatic, um, and it's very feminine. Very traditional sort of dress silhouette. We also have one here by Vera Wang, again a little bit um, dropped, with a little bit more of a mermaid style, but again bottom heavy, the fullness is down here, and it's bringing the eye up here to the top of the body, sort of um, almost acting like she's coming out of a cloud, kind of silhouetting like a pedestal. Here's another uh, sort of historical example of a Christian Dior gown. Of course, he was um, very popular with the new look where this um, silhouette uh, really be first became uh, really, really popular in the 50s with the new look where we had a sort of um, fitted top and then flowing out in huge fullness all the way out and around and down. A few more examples of bottom heavy looks. We have one here from Chanel, a little bit more modern. So a big poof at the bottom here, almost sort of acts as a base for the rest of the dress to sort of stand upon. And here's another sort of historical example of someone who also loved and helped create that sort of traditional um, elegant gown shape. This is a very famous dress called the Four Leaf Clover Dress from uh, Charles James. And um, the structure of these dresses were actually just, you know, as a little tangent, unbelievable. Um, they were so well structured that all of these dresses could stand up on their own without a form. So this form, you doesn't don't even need it there. It'll just stand up as it is, right? Uh, just as it is, uh, like it is. But again, we have those full, great fullness at the bottom, sweeping up, um, sort of again uh, to present the sort of top half on this very elegant, dramatic manner. Next we have an hourglass silhouette. So this will be sort of a fullness on top, um, pinched in at the waist, and full at the bottom. And this is another very traditional silhouette, especially for women, as it sort of mimics uh, the female body's own silhouette shape. Here we have a uh, very historically famous suit called the Bar Suit from Christian Dior, and it really emphasizes that um, hourglass silhouette, as you can see here. 
Here's a more modern example from Chanel. So they've um, padded out the shoulders up here with these beautiful ruffles, again giving us nice fullness here. Um, we have taken away all the fullness here in the waist, so we've allowed it to come in and then la allowed it to fill out again toward the bottom. Another example of that here in this Marchesa dress, um, fullness up here with the sort of collar and sleeves and coming to a th thin sort of waist very close to the body and then filling out again with this big luxurious um, skirt. And here's a Gian, uh, Giambattista uh, valley dress again, filling out, sort of letting this floof out at the top, pinching it in here with a little bit of a bow so it's hugging really close to the waist and then allowed to explode out again in this fullness. It's a very feminine silhouette, very soft, and it really focuses on sort of the waist and the body. It doesn't quite draw up like the other ones to the face and the upper part of the body. It really sort of draws into the waist and really allows us to focus more on the female form. Next we have an undulating silhouette and this is sort of like a wave coming in and out. And it's used a lot and sort of um, because it mimics again the way that fabric flows and uh, gives us a sort of movement to the silhouette. Here we can see some very extreme examples, um, two from Rei Kaokuba, um, and as we can see sort of the waving shapes of these petals coming off of this garment give us that wavy uh, movement and silhouette. It's very playful, it's very interesting, keeps our eye moving around the lines. Here again, a sort of uh, more simplified undulation, but uh, in no way a simple garment. Uh, very dramatic, uh, very big, but again playing with these big undulating shapes. Here's another one from uh, Iris Van Herpen, who's probably one of the best at capturing an undulating silhouette. Um, here with this beautiful dress here, and we'll see another one by her. Uh, in this dress with these beautiful sort of undulating wave-like shapes uh, going through the garment. And here we see a dress from Alan Mc Alexander McQueen and again it's a little bit more simple but we can see the shapes and they bring these sort of in and out and round and down and these wave-like undulating patterns. Uh, very pretty again a lot of movement, a lot of um, uh, different types of shapes to look at. This however can be very, um, so when you're using an undulating silhouette um, it's really focused on the garment themselves. As you can see a lot of these garments have left this sort of normal body shape behind um, for something else. Um, this is really a silhouette that really focuses on the garment itself and its own composition and shape um, and a lot of times can ignore the body. Here of course we can see it a little bit better, sort of incorporated body and undulating styles, but in a lot of those other examples we can sort of see the whole body just sort of being left behind. Next we have a straight silhouette. This is very simple. It basically just takes the body and gives it straight lines all the way down. Um, it's very sort of classic, very elegant, can make um, women look quite tall um, and a lot of times we'll use it to focus on certain details. So here we're focusing on the drapes that are coming down. Again, it can elongate the figure. Here it allows us to focus on these beautiful um, prints um, that Pucci was known for. Here's some more straight silhouettes, again straight can be quite elegant, a little understated, um, a little bit more serious. Um, one from Chanel, a short dress, but again, focusing on sort of straight line silhouettes. And here's a Poiré, a historical dress. You can call it a flapper dress, which uh, is where the straight silhouette, sort of in, in modern times at least, um, really first became very, very popular in the flapper days. You can see the straight silhouette we have, you know, we're not trying to fill out anywhere, we're just up and down, very straight, very serious, um, and again, very elongating. Next we have tiered. And tiered refers to different layers. 
Um, and here's two very good examples of, of big, but also tiered, so we can see it coming in and out and in and out. And it's a little bit sharper than our undulating shape um, because it's a little bit harder corners we see after every sort of tier. Um, but it creates a very exciting uh, shape for us. Um, and again, those little tiers um, create a visual effect of, of you know, uh, kind of like waves in a similar way as our undulating style. It's a little sharper, it's a little bit more harsh in its impact, um, but really great for sort of drawing the eye around it and giving it us a lot to sort of look at and a lot of little details. Here we have a little bit simpler of tiered examples. Here's uh, dressed by Bob Mackey. We can see the tiers kind of cutting in, cutting out, cutting up um, in sort of little stages. And here we can see a, another um, Charles James dress. It's tiered, but it's a lot more subdued. And we're focusing just here, and then we're going to drop down again. Um, again, a little bit more simple. Um, so we don't always need to take things to absolute extremes. We can still sort of play around depending on what we want. And now let's look at experimenting with silhouettes. So those are just some basic uh, silhouette styles that we can see uh, very commonly. But it is um, equally as common for designers to really kind of push the limits with silhouette and really experiment with it visually. Um, because it has so much to do with the sort of composition of a look and um, the drama and artistry of a look, uh, silhouette is often one of the things that designers um, really try to push to the limit to get the aesthetics of their garment to a next level. So let's look at some of, uh, you know, very experimental silhouettes. And I want to focus first on Victor and Rolf. And um, <laughs> these are actually some of my favorite de designers that we're going to have in here. So maybe that's why I picked them up. But they're also really great examples of, you know, just having fun with fashion, having fun with shapes, pushing the limits. So we see this very dramatic silhouette. It's sort of, it's very traditional up here, but then we just go crazy up here with this, you know, this dramatic line, this asymmetry that's cut into it, um, gives it this, um, you know, very dramatic effect, um, very, very visual. And it's really fun how it's tied in with this sort of, you know, on this side, it's, it's, it's so traditional. Um, but when we get over here, it's just, you know, goes crazy. And here again, a sort of uh, really kind of fun, humorous ploy, uh, like with a traditional design that we'll, we'll see another one just like this one too. But it's taking this, you know, traditional silhouette and then doing something really dramatic and not seen before. So there's a little black part of the dress here and it's giving this optical illusion like she's cut in half. Um, very, very interesting, you know, very, very kind of cheeky but smart. Here with two, we can see some very extreme examples. All of these um, are Victor and Rolf uh, outfits um, and playing with silhouette. Here, this was actually an ode to Van Gogh, um, but dramatic silhouettes. They love to play with dramatic silhouettes, and we can see this sort of, you know, star shape by the headpiece coming out and being accented by the big flowers poofing out all around her. Here again, um, something incredibly playful. Um, we have these sort of tubes coming out of this very dramatic shape. Um, again, uh, you know, just sort of pushing the boundaries of what silhouette can do um, and what fashion is, and it's, it's just very fun. Um, to look at and, uh, you know, to think about who must have taken a while to make. Um, who knows what's in there. Uh, and here again, just like this came from that other collection, they're taking this sort of traditional silhouette, but then just doing something a little bit different, experimenting out, cutting little holes in it like this. Um, you know, just playing with that sh those shapes, those silhouettes, um, taking something traditional and then changing it up some way you might not expect. Next we have Iris Van Herpen. Like I said, she's the master of undulating design silhouettes, but she loves to push silhouettes to the limit um, and play with its dramatic effect and how it can be used to create these just aesthetically stunning masterpieces. 
and here we can see you know it's this big sort of round shape that's been cut to really um, accent the face and we have these beautiful undulating lines to sort of frame it um, and here we have these lovely bubbles coming out and around um, shaping the garment shaping the silhouette again a hugely dramatic shape and silhouette here um, almost like an explosion beautiful shapes coming out here you can just get lost in the different um, lines and 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 beautiful shapes that are coming out a few more from Iris Van Herpen um, gorgeous dress one of my favorites this is just so stunning it doesn't even look real it looks like its own painting um, on her um, but again the beautiful silhouettes and you know so glad they chose a black background because these shapes are coming out so nicely against it um, but beautiful 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 shapes playing around with that um, silhouette uh, playing around with again drama here we see very similar these you know um, little branches almost like feathers coming out um, to give you know this very interesting dramatic silhouette here too she has these almost like arms with um, like wind sculpture designs coming from it uh, which again is, is creating all these different interesting shapes and patterns and uh, uh, different silhouettes that are, are completely experimental um, but completely lovely and we also have a few other sort of experimental silhouettes um, here I have Marchesa um, where they have these sort of almost beautiful origami pieces coming out and creating these lovely sort of architectural cuts and pieces peeking out from the dress um, making it again very interesting and, and very architectural um, two more from Ray Kalkuba again a master of playing with silhouettes um, here we have another big one it's sort of layered and, and not only are we having uh, this sort of big silhouette but we're playing with sort of seeing the different textures here we can see the little pieces sort of ruffling out in layers here it's sort of smooth and straight um, but then when we get down here we get all these sort of soft little ruffle shapes in the silhouette so again um, playing with all building upon the different layers of shapes um, the size of them how they're being impacted and here's another just great playful piece with silhouette just a big giant circle uh, with little ruffles around it um, again incredibly dramatic incredibly fun and you know um, just great to look at um, makes a great impact when coming down the runway so on and so forth so um, it was pretty short but I just wanted to you know get you thinking about shapes how you use them in your designs and you know um, it's something that a lot of times I think that beginner fashion designs are a little beginning fashion designers are a little hesitant to work with um, they t especially when drawing uh, they get afraid to build out from the croaky body um, they want to just sort of trace that body and, and so on and so forth but silhouette really has this huge impact and and every bit of clothing has some sort of silhouette to it so um, you know think about it in your work and think about you know the sort of drama and effect that you want to use think about the different shapes that you want to use and um, don't be afraid to start building out in a way and exaggerate those shapes from the body exaggerate the body shape um, because it's just going to add to the depth and beauty of your designs uh, and we have a little bit of a, a you know a quick um, silhouette exercise uh, to go along with this so um, <clears throat> you get the opportunity to um, play around with silhouettes and start thinking about it um, and I hope that you start thinking about silhouettes in your own designs as well if you've been a little bit hesitant to build out shapes and uh, play around with it um, you know don't um, it can only add to your design all right guys bye bye